welcome to my second video on this channel. So excited to be back. So last video, we worked on the case for this machine. And um, this video, I'm going to try to go ahead and get the machine itself transformed the way that I want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop her out of this case, which is so lovely. I do love the way it turned out. And I want to show you, first of all, a little bit about the machine. So, um, I don't know if you remember, but there was a sticker that was across here last time. And I took that off just because I wanted to see how dirty it was going to be underneath there. And there was quite a bit of like rock hard glue. But when I took it off, I learned something about this machine. Let me see if I can get you down here. Do you see that? It says made for FAF, household sewing machine distributor. So that's one more piece of the clue. Like I said, this is a little mid-century made in Japan kind of machine. Um, all of these little dark marks here, this is from pins, like I said, there's little chips all over here where the paint itself is totally chipped off and it's bare metal there, okay? It's not rusted right now, but you never know. And then in the back, okay, in the back, back here where the motor goes, there's a, a chip that's actually pretty big. Well, shoot, just rubbing it and more paint fell off. And of course you can see more chips over here and things like that. So here's the, the, the scoop with this machine. It is in very good mechanical shape. When I found it, it was missing, well, a screw that would hold this on. And unfortunately, the only screw in my little stash I could find that fits this hole is this big old beast here. So I'm using it. If I can find a smaller thumb screw or something, I will swap that out. Um, it was missing that. It was missing a presser foot. It was missing a couple other things that I had parts for. So here's the deal. I have a very creative sewing machine channel. So, you know, clutch your pearls, ladies. What I am going to be doing is I'm not going to totally repaint her. It's a nice color paint, but what I am going to be doing is sanding it down. So where all of these chips are, I'm going to smooth it with a very light grade sandpaper. I'm going to be giving her a clear coat you know, masking everything off, giving her a clear coat. And then we're gonna come back with a series of decals that I have on order, which hopefully will be here soon, that's gonna tie her into that Van Gogh irises that the case is. So I think she's gonna end up beautiful, but you can kind of see the color um, on the wheel is very different than the color of the machine, just from yellowing, aging, things like that. Okay, but like the wording that's on the front here, that made for faff and all, I'm going to do what I can to make sure that that is not obscured. Uh, maybe the, the name up here, I'm trying to see if I can do it so that that part is not obscured. I want to protect her, keep her from, you know, the possibility of getting even more damage in her paint, but also I want to transform her into a thing of beauty, but still keep her extremely functional. That's the whole trade-off, so let me get started. All right, so I have put her onto my little turntable, taken her out of her base so that she will be easy to deal with. And, let me move this over. Whenever I'm working on a machine, I give it a little plastic tote. I find that the easiest way for me to keep track of things, to have a separate tote for the machine, and a whole bunch of Ziploc bags. And if they don't get totally, you know, disgustingly dirty on one project, I will reuse them. So this will be her little tote because we're gonna kind of strip her down so that when it comes time to make her beautiful, she will be fairly ready to go. Pretty much in each Ziploc bag, I put one component and it's assorted screws because I don't want to have missing screws or have a screw and not know which part it goes to. So that little back plate with its screw is going to go in here. You know, let me get my screwdriver set. I have a lovely pink case for my 
what these are is they uh, they're fabulous tools for working on sewing machines. This is their sewing machine and antique set. It comes in all different colors, but I got a pink box. That way, you know, it's obviously mine. Um, but I'm just going to one at a time go through each little component and figure out and put it in its own individual little bag. So let me just start up here and work my way around. See how clean it is in there. This is an amazingly clean machine. Um, I did give it a little once over, put one or two drops of oil in specific places, but really she is good to go, you know? She is so good to go. This little screw is what holds the presser foot down at different pressures. And there is not a washer, huh? Usually, Usually, you know, what is usually anymore. At the top of the springs, there's a little washer that sits on top, but not on this machine. I'm not going to take off the feed dogs, I mean mask around that, but I am going to put the little shuttle and it has a bobbin in it right here. Um, this machine has two bobbins actually, this one that's in here and another one, so bonus bobbin. I just grabbed a, I think, what is this? This is a 220 sandpaper, but I've already used it. I was actually using it partly on the case when I was sanding the wood so it's worn a little bit because I want something very light and what I am going to be doing is just kind of sanding around to make sure all of these chips have any loose pieces off of them. Okay I've got it pretty well sanded um, like I said I wasn't scrubbing super hard just wanting to make sure wherever there were chips which is like all over that I got anything loose, anything sharp from around it. Um, I got a lot of stuff. There was only one chip over here near the wording and I tried to be careful that I didn't sand the words off while I was doing that. Up here all the pin rashes, yeah, there's some that can't be avoided there, but we will do what we can do.
Okay, so at this point, I had to switch over to my blue because I was running out of the regular. I've got these chrome pieces all covered up, okay? And I covered up this with blue tape. For something like this area back here, I tend to shove in a couple paper towels or a you know, rolled up little piece of newspaper or whatever and call that good. If you feel like it's going to fall out, you can put a piece of tape over it, but that usually works pretty good right there for me. I'm also going to put a little bit in here just because, just because, honestly. You know, when we're done. Okay, so that is in there. This I am painting. Okay, up here where the tension goes, that's fine. It's not a clear pathway all the way through into here, so that's gonna be okay. I'm just gonna leave that open, but this I'm gonna be covering up. So again, I'm just gonna kinda stick a paper towel in here first, and then I will tape over it. But the paper towel is just like one more layer of protection. Okay, I'm going to call her done for the night. Tomorrow I will take her down and uh, give her one quick coat of white just to freshen her up and then probably two clear coats of a Rust-Oleum type paint. And then once she's dry, I'm going to give her like at least 24 hours to let that paint totally dry and cure. And hopefully my decals will be here by then on clear coating her and adding a series of decals on her that would be a Van Gogh inspired decal scene but two things happened first I got the decals um, and they were beautiful but they were made on an inkjet printer and because of that they bled it was a very um, here's a little piece of one that was left here it was very, very full of ink, you know, and so it, it just didn't work out. So when that happened, I was thinking, well, I need to change my strategy. So what I did is took a little scrap of my fabric, and this is kind of a similar color to the base part of the um, image that I used for the cover of the Van Gogh lilies. And so, not lilies, irises, I keep saying lilies. Anyway, and I decided that this would go along kind of with that leather that I used for the, the base, because that's what it'll be up against. So, then I got another set of decals done that I'm going to use on here, but these are done um, laser, okay? Laser. So that way, there's no way that this is going to bleed, so... Um, I did paint her, so all my little lettering disappeared, but I do have the wording here that I will be putting on her, so we won't lose any of that information. So, let me go ahead and get started cutting out my decals. Before I do, you might notice that, here's my wheel, you know, I took off a few more pieces and masked everything, but while I had it taken apart, I decided that I might as well also paint the metal foot pedal and the motor. But I can't just paint the motor because, you know, you could destroy the motor. So that gave me the opportunity to take it apart. So over in my paint building, I actually have the motor disassembled so I can paint the shell. And I'll have to put it back together again. And I'll show you that, but um, it was good that I was able to do that because the motor did need a little bit of cleaning, you know. I was able to see the brushes, see what condition everything was in. So that worked out well. So let me go ahead and pull some of the uh, papers and masking and everything off of here so we can get a better look at what we have to do. This one, this machine's name is going to be Vincent for obvious reasons. So I just set my decal in the water. Let me show you over here, just for enough time that it starts to get a little bit movable. I don't want to force it. Okay, so now that I can see that it's wet, I'm gonna place it in the name spot, 
where I want it. At this point, if I want to move it, I still can. But I think that looks pretty good. Um, yes. He usually signed his name at a bit of an angle. But I think that that might look like I'm messing it up on... So I'm just going to try to make it nice and flat here. Vincent. Okay. And there we start. Okay, this little label that has all of the information, I'm just going to put right back here where it was before. Next, I have a image of most of, I think the water lilies, or the irises actually goes a long ways, but this is a, a small enough piece that it's going to fit, and that's going to be the focal point on the plate down here. Okay, so you see what I mean? This, using this color background with this image that has so much green in it, the background comes through. You can get a um, special paper that has white background instead of clear. I got the water slide paper that has clear. I think if I did it with a white background, that would look better. So I'm not really happy with the way that looks. And since it's still wet at this point, I can pull it off. But well, unfortunately, it looks like this one is going to change color enough that it might obscure what I'm trying to do. So I am just going to try to put it back on here. Play with it for a craft project and get some white backed paper and give it one more shot.
the presser foot and motor out of my paint area. I'm pulling out, pulling off all of the masking tape that I have on here. <coughs> Excuse me. Protecting the little mechanism. I'm going to be making a pouch with a little quilted padded pouch that this is going to slip into when not in use. Because one of the worst things is when you have a beautiful machine and then you throw a metal presser foot on it and it scratches everything up. So I will be doing that before I'm all done.
right, so I found this decal on and it sat overnight and it's on very, very securely. So one of the last things I'm gonna do is I wanna put a clear coat over the bottom plate here. I'm gonna put it over this part over here too, so I'm gonna pull my chrome pieces off and paint here. And I'm also gonna put a very light coat no, I think I'm going to leave that still. This is the part that might be in danger of getting scratched or something later, just because of the nature of sewing. You put scissors there, you run zippers over it and everything. I don't want that to scratch. So what I'm going to do is put a coat of my clear shellac. I'll probably end up putting at least two coats, but I'm just going to be using a very nice brush and pulling off all of my little chrome pieces here and just working just around the base of the machine. So first I want to make sure there is no dust or anything on here. It's nice and clean. And then just carefully painting it. The shellac is very thin. It's not like a really thick um, polyurethane or anything like that. And so it does dry very nicely. Just like a little crumb right there. So, as you can see, it goes on nice and thin. I'm going to go ahead and finish painting just around this base. I'm not going to go up the, the main body there, just here. I pulled off these so I can go around this area nicely, too. All right, well, I am thinking that Vincent is now done. You can see my reflection in the little chrome piece there. That's fun. So let me give you a close-up of what we've got here. Of course, I do have a better decal here, and I was able to do that with a decal paper with a white background. Now there is a little bag that is made from the leftover piece of fabric from the case. It has a quilted lining in there, um, which so I can get this in here like that, which is for putting the petal in because I don't want this petal to go on here, get knocked around and maybe scratch or put a little chunk in there because that wouldn't be fun after all of that. So, with the petal being stored in this lovely bag, you know, and this was the color that I was trying to match with the machine, you know, and I think that worked pretty well. So, one last time, I am just going to plug it in give a quick demonstration here and then we'll close them up in this case. Hopefully you saw um, me wind the bobbin so you know the bobbin winder works and the way it is um, when you're going to wind the bobbin you just have to push it up against the wheel so that this little rubber tire here over, so this little rubber tire here comes in contact with the wheel and there's not really a spring action you just kind of have to push it with your thumb but that's not a big deal. And I can tell you one other thing about the machine. When I was putting it back together, um, I was looking at my Singer 127 and 128 book. And I can tell you that this machine is very, very similar to these. You know, it's probably a clone of this. So, if you're looking for more information on how to use it or something like that, I would refer to information on these machines. Um, it was extremely close, extremely helpful. So, let me go ahead and get started. I just have a piece of flannel folded up here. Okay, I'm going to start with the little stitch lever over here all the way down and then slowly move it to the total up position. That's one thing that's a little odd about this is in order to get it in the total up position you have to have this just about engaged. I think that might be a design issue but you know it works. Right now I have it at the total top position you can get without engaging the bobbin here. So let's see what it looks like. Oh, up is backwards. Okay. So if you want a back tack, you push it all the way up. So maybe that's a safety feature. Who knows? Okay, pushing the lever all the way down. 
a nice long stitch length, okay? Looks like about six stitches per inch. And I'm just gonna go about halfway. The table is very bouncy. Pull this up. Get my snips. All right, so this is the thread needle side. Okay, tension looks pretty good to me. And this is the bobbit side. Looks pretty good. So down here, we slide this. You have to lift the machine just to here. You slide that out, and when you need to change the bobbin, you just have to make sure that the little spaceship is as close to you as possible. You know, if it's not, just turn the wheel and it'll get in that position. There's a little button right here. When you push that, it's going to eject the shuttle. Okay, and then you can just lift it out. Pop it back in there. All is well. Touched her rusty wheel and knew I'd take her home. I brought her to my farm in an Amish neighborhood where simple living's valued. She'd be loved and understood. I put her on a treadle stand and coaxed her wheel to turn. I felt her joy and easing with my study and concern. Cleaned her and I oiled her, showed her off to all my friends, repaired her hurts and years of use, and let her sew again. 